uh, for a lot of people. So terrific. Now I wanted to introduce um, Chi Li and, and I'll let him introduce his um, folks. He's got a very interesting talk about, um, about using I2B2 on top of um, Iris and I'll let him dive into the details. Um, Chi, take it time. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you very much. And I uh, assume you can hear me and uh, are you seeing the full screen view? Yes. Excellent, and uh, I need to verify that. And I really appreciate it. So we have uh, several presenters, uh, myself and uh, Raj work for InterSystems, uh, and Atoli is from our partner, First Line Software. And uh, it, uh, I really love the conversation so far and the fantastic clinical utility. I love the speed and what Zach talked about. Uh, really, it's just, just uh, the, the speed to have people collaborate and leveraging technology, enabling this collaboration for research is just fantastic. Uh, the uh, conversation just now regarding fire, it's actually a fascinating uh, opportunity for both the research community and also the industry as well. And uh, so I will emphasize that, uh, uh, Kavi, as you talked about, ask these questions, we are faced with same challenges. And uh, I will say that uh, we'll definitely be interested in sharing uh, our lessons and uh, uh, painful experiences or good experiences uh, with the uh, research team uh, and uh, certainly the community. And uh, so what I wanna talk about today is really around uh, a, a, what we call the creative data technology. And uh, this is a, a fairly interesting in a sense that uh, if you look at uh, I2B2, when you install, you have options for Oracle, M M MS SQL Server, Postgres. And uh, what's interesting is that uh, there's actually a, a, another very, uh, I would say uh, a, a database platform that has a long history. Uh, at Lee, a Lee, I'm sorry to interrupt. We are do, we are seeing your notes on the side. So if you just hit swap display. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Thank yeah, you. Very easy, yeah. And uh, so the uh, the little history there is that uh, I remember there was a business plan in the in a drawer of the uh, MGH office. So that was a long time ago, about months. And uh, so many folks probably uh, were, were familiar with MOMS if, uh, if you started uh, working on that many, many years ago. And, um, uh, but uh, uh, since then, uh, has really has been the, uh, the, the platform for many organizations within the U.S. And, uh, and uh, you can see some of the numbers here, 40% in the U.S. And uh, this is a MOMS-based information system. Now, where inner system comes in, uh, was uh, uh, it was created in 1979 to commercialize MOMS hierarchical database. Uh, it was launched in Cache in 1997, and uh, of course, all the, uh, the the systems have since migrated, and there are a few very famous ones. But another key thing I also want to emphasize is that uh, InterSystem Office is right across the river. Uh, I map it out; it's about uh, 0.8 miles, and uh, I can usually cover that distance in 12 minutes. And uh, but it is very close. Uh, we have very close relationships and uh, uh, goes um, on, on many levels from uh, all the way uh, to the top from the owner and the CEO perspective. So it's just a long history uh, that we have collaborated. So we are very interested in uh, really to support and to continue to uh, figure out ways to contribute. And uh, we have several ideas around that. And uh, uh, so the uh, I think the key thing to, uh, to kind of uh, see from here is uh, is that uh, uh, this is indeed a, a, a not only a kind of a data management uh, platform technology and uh, just like Oracle and the SQL Server that you are familiar with, but also it has already been used uh, by EMR companies like Epic outside the US as track here. Uh, it's a fairly strong company. Uh, and uh, so it's very solid, uh, many uh, about a thousand hospitals outside the US uh, and within the US uh, earlier, uh, Josh, uh, talked about the health information exchange. We actually cover about 120 million uh, patients that's uh, stored in the data aggregation platform in the statewide health information exchanges, so on and so forth. Uh, so my dream is actually to create a kind of a pipeline that so you can create these digital twins very quickly. And uh, because we already aggregate a lot of data, normalize the data, figure out a lot of issues that you don't have to deal with. And so that would be my sort of a dream, but we can start with something a little bit more basic. Uh, which is uh, how to create a new database platform uh, called Iris uh, that can be uh, be another option for the I2B2 uh, community. So the work has not been fully completed yet, uh, but the goal is just like Epic is now uh, fully uh, adopting the Iris platform, uh, but also uh, really get, get it to the community where it stands for intuitive and reliable, interoperable and scalable. I think these are the key 
uh, requirements that the, the community also is looking for. Uh, for, for instance, the database management. Now, in addition to uh, the, uh, the co-value pairs, there gotta be a lot more different types of data, high frequency data, and also the diff different type of uh, management that you need to do uh, for these data. And interoperability is key. How can you ingest the fire data, export fire data more easily? And uh, hopefully, Cavi, this will be out of the box uh, so that the researcher does not have to learn. That would be ideal. And uh, lots of comments about the machine learning and analytics and all this is uh, very important. And now one thing I want to mention is that it's not just uh, the technical capability, but rather it's an ecosystem that you can tap into, uh, which is also very important. Hopefully, the, what InterSystem has it can also help in that regard. Um, uh, just in a uh, very quickly is that uh, our goal and uh, community goals are, are very much aligned. And uh, my certainly my wish is that uh, we can help you to grow the, uh, the ITP2 community. Uh, that's number one, number of sites, but also the use cases. And, and in addition to, uh, to support the clinical trials, I heard a great, uh, the ambitions around population health management and the real-time engagement, clinical trials, all these are very important. Now, one key thing that I really want to emphasize is that uh, how we can lower the technology and expertise barrier, make it easy so that it's easy to install. It's uh, already high performance. You don't have to do a lot of tweaking, have lots of uh, inter uh, interoperability standard like a fire out of the box. We, you can also leverage another open source technology that we offer, uh, natural language processing that you can leverage. Uh, we're building a lot of uh, integration with our uh, Python, Jupyter Notebook, and also the third-party commercial vendors like Integrator uh, using the data robot tool, but we have some building AI uh, uh, capability that you can use SQL to, uh, to build models, uh, to, to test the models. All this will make it much super easy uh, for you to uh, leverage the data. And uh, lastly, I'll just say for, in some cases, uh, uh, typically you have, uh, you have a staff to uh, complete a lot of important tasks, but maybe if you're interested in some kind of automated tools, uh, whether it's ETL data refresh or virtual cubes, and that there's also additional kind of a, there's a commercial uh, package that you can leverage. And uh, so I'm gonna transition to, uh, uh, to Raj to talk about our support for open source. 